Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome all of you on this cold morning. There was some word about a uh, Barron, Barron County weather advisory about uh, wind chill being 35 below this morning, but I don't know where that went this morning. <laughs> anyway, good to have you here. <clears throat> And it's nice to have heat in the church, so we're comfortable this morning. So you probably noticed we moved the baptismal font to the back of the church in the middle of the aisle. Today is Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. And <clears throat> my tradition, which probably you're not used to, is that um, I'm going to offer a blessing to everyone as you leave today to remind you of your baptismal vows. I'll make the sign of the cross on your forehead with the baptismal waters. So that's why that's in the back. And we're going to do our children's sermon back in the back end of the church. So you're going to have to strain your neck today for, for the children's sermon. And I want to remind you, Jesus loves you. Bible study today at 1030 in the pastor's office, our second meeting. So come and join us if you want. Our church uh, office is open Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. Catechism class at 6.30. And we're going to pack a lot into it. We've missed several classes now because of inclement weather. Next Sunday is our annual meeting, followed by a potluck dinner. The ladies will provide rolls and beverages for you. But... Um, Start planning ahead for your wonderful dishes so we can all enjoy them. Uh, Larry uh, Bessonette died on January 2nd. He is the father of Brenda Link. And keep uh, Brenda and her family in your thoughts and prayers. And uh, during our service, just add, we'll add her name, add his name to our prayers. Again, if you had any... Uh, Changes in your email address. Be sure and tell us so we can have better communication with you. Maybe you even have an email address this year that you didn't have last year. Let us know. Uh, Rick Broughton, we still only have, we, we could use one more person for the call committee. If you're interested, talk to him or to me today. And any other announcements from the Okay, so I see folks wearing their Packer colors. We've got to celebrate. We're already won the NFC championship, right? And it's the Lions today. So on for, onward towards the Super Bowl. All right, we're going to say hello to everyone that is watching live streaming today. Let's begin on this side, if you want to turn around, and uh, let's give them a wave. And over on this side, let's give the folks a wave. Okay. So we hope those of you who are watching enjoy our worship service. We know that you can download the church bulletin, or if you don't have... Uh, a printer at home, let us know and we can mail that to you. But uh, we want you to know that you're a part of our worship service as well. So we have a virtual congregation and a live in-person congregation this morning. Okay, let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and sing our first hymn, As With Gladness, Men of Old.
want to say that that him is sort of ending the Christmas period and uh, moving into Epiphany. This last week was Epiphany of our Lord Sunday, and now is baptism of our of our Lord. So we're in that transition time as we move into the season of Epiphany. If you would please rise as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life, live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service that we may rejoice to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading is from Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 through 7 but now thus says the Lord he who created you O Jacob he who formed you O Israel do not fear for I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine when you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you were precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, the word of the Lord. Let's read read the psalm responsively. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The 
The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees wither and the strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Our second reading is from Acts 8, verses 14 through 17. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had come, not come upon any of them, and that they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on him and on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel of the Lord according to Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove and a voice came from heaven you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Oh, we, got, we got some children here. You want to come with me? We're going to stand around the baptismal font. Um, have you guys ever been down by a river? Been down by a river? We got some rivers around here, don't we? Yeah. Well, there's a story in the Bible that I just read about uh, people gathering down by a river, and this river was in the country where Jesus lived and grew up. It was uh, Israel, Palestine area, and uh, do you remember? The name of the river? Jordan, the Jordan River. Okay, what is the closest river around here? The Saint Croix close? Red Sea. come to Wisconsin, and it was 2,000 years ago, he went to come to the Red Cedar River. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in the story, John the Baptist, uh, John the Baptist lived in Wisconsin, he was, was the Packers, he 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 was the Packers,
John the Baptist around the to the river and they came to the river. They were adults and they were baptized in the river. And then Jesus himself was baptized. Well, here we are in the year 2022. That's right, 2022. And uh, we have many churches. Families have grown Scandinavian Lutheran Church. And what's happened is that families to small font. So were you were you baptized here? Yeah? Were you if you were you weren't. Okay. I was baptized. <laughs> so, um, So, it's real water. You want to touch it? Go ahead. And the water bring a blessing to us. And we do it to remind us that now we belong... family. Look at all our brothers and sisters. Some are older than you guys. <laughs> but we all belong to you for the wonderful story about Jesus' baptism. And today we are reminded about our own baptism, that you blessed us and accepted us into your family, a family that is forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Going like this. <laughs> so, good morning. As you are hearing already God's word through the children's sermon, we now just kind of move into the uh, sermon of the morning, and I'm going to be talking about baptism. I guess you knew that, didn't you? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> most of us can't remember when we were baptized, but in this digital age and uh, age of picture taking, we can look back and see pictures of, uh, of us when we were baptized to remind us that we were claimed by you through holy baptism into the family of God. As we read and think about the story of Jesus' baptism, may we reflect upon our own covenant of baptism this morning. So we ask your Holy Spirit to engage us in our thoughts and in our mind and in our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord the Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. <clears throat> well, recently we studied about holy baptism in our confirmation class. <clears throat> and we did note that baptism was a time for family. 
And uh, we, I asked the kids to bring pictures of their own baptism. And it was very interesting. Most of the kids, some of the kids didn't do it, but a lot of the kids uh, asked mom and dad to dig out pictures of their baptism. And uh, the kids showed us of, uh, you know, grandma and grandpa were there and their sponsors. And uh, they had brothers and sisters. And then of the, of the baptism and the pastor that baptized them. So um, it's just wonderful uh, to have that memorabilia. And I know in your own archives someplace, I'm talking to you who, who are seniors now, uh, it'll be a challenge, won't it, to dig out pictures of your baptism. I know they took pictures back then too, but probably black and white pictures. Mine is black and white, right? <laughs> Curiously, I've been intrigued by the influence of today's gospel, which refers to all of the people present at Jesus' baptism. I don't know how many times I've read this scripture, but uh, this time it really hit me about the presence of other people at Jesus' baptism. Others were being baptized by John, and then Jesus is baptized, and um, I have to reflect, this is not in the scripture, this is my own conjecture, got it straight? I have to think that possibly Mary and Joseph might have been there too, Jesus, earthly mom and dad. Family in Luke is very important. The beginning of Luke begins with the story of ancestry. And a lot of people had been following John in hopes of seeing the Messiah. And this was the event, this was the coming out event of Jesus being the Messiah. And knowing they studied and learned in the synagogues about the Messiah, and since Mary was filled with the Holy Spirit, I can't help but think she had to be there. So many people were present. And I think that Jesus' earthly family was there. Now, again, conjecture. This is not in the scripture. You know, Jesus was 33 years old. He probably had brothers and sisters. Bible doesn't talk about that, but maybe they were there too. Isn't that interesting to think about that from that perspective? Now I say that because when we have baptisms, we invite family, don't we? We invite family. We want family to be there. It's an occasion. And then we like to baptize in church because our church family wants to celebrate with us. So I just want you to know this is conjecture. It's not in the Bible. <laughs> but I can't help but think about that perspective. But this is the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. Baptized at the hand of Jesus, and a hand of John the Baptist. Now John is baptizing a baptism of repentance. People are coming to receive forgiveness of their sins. We, had, we have to note now, with Jesus' baptism, something changes. Those that are baptized in Jesus now receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the forgiveness of their sins, but they receive now the Holy Spirit. So. The baptism that we have been baptized with is different than John the Baptist. Got it? Just want you to make that clear. So I'm going to talk about the three meanings of baptism. First, it is <clears throat> the washing away of sins. The scriptures teach <clears throat> and personal experience affirms that each of us is a sinner and we need forgiveness. We are born into sin, the sin of Adam and Eve. <clears throat> Adam and Eve separated themselves from God. 
And now through Jesus, we have that original sin forgiven. We now enter God's kingdom through baptism. So it's the forgiveness of sins. There was a, a movie a long time ago. It's called, O Brother, Where Art Thou? It is the retelling of Homer's Odyssey set in 1930s Mississippi. So there's uh, three convicts, they escape. And uh, they escape in Mississippi, and there's a point in the movie in which uh, they hear all these people gathering down by the river. Some of you are shaking your heads. Remember this scene? They're down by the river. <clears throat> and uh, Delmer, one of the three convicts, says, I'm going to go down and get baptized. I'm going to go get baptized. I'm going to have my sins forgiven. And so he runs down to the river, and the minister dunks him in the river, and uh, he pops up out of the river, and he's smiling. He's forgiven, and he goes to his fellow convicts, and he says, uh, neither God nor man has anything against me anymore. I'm a new man. And he explains that the minister washed away all of his sins. He says, uh, one of the convicts says, well, even when you stole that pig, Delmer? But you know, you said you were innocent of that. One of the convicts tells him. And he says, yeah, I lied. But even that's washed away. In baptism, our sinful nature is washed away, and a new life with God begins. It's a wonderful scene, but it remarkably tells the story of what baptism is all about. We're a new person. All our sins are washed away. We're made clean again. So that's the first thing that happens in baptism, that our sins are forgiven. The second means we have an identification with Jesus Christ. At Jesus' baptism, a voice comes from heaven and declares, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And in our baptism, Jesus is God's son, and we are joined with him to become God's children. And it signifies a new identification. So, God can see the cross on our forehead made at baptism. We can't see it, but God can. We carry the cross of Christ with us, and it began in baptism. So one of the things we're going to do today is just remind you of that cross with the water. So secondly, uh, in baptism, we identify with Jesus Christ. Thirdly, baptism is a family event. Baptism signifies entrance into the family of God. I read a story about a pastor who served a congregation in uh, rural Oklahoma, southwest Oklahoma. He was there about three years. The population of the little community was 450 people. There were three churches in town, a Baptist church, a Nazarene church, and a Christian church, a Christian church. And uh, the attendance at those churches kind of varied, depended on the day and the Sunday, just like here, you know. But constantly, there were pickup trucks in front of the town cafe, faithfully, throughout the week. And so what happened in this little cafe is that uh, all the men got together in the morning with coffee and they talked about everything that was going on. And uh, one of the things, one of the, uh, the men who they liked to talk about was Frank. And uh, one morning they were talking about, yeah, Frank never goes to church. He ain't ever gonna go to church. He never enter the doors of any church. So one day the pastor met old Frank out on the sidewalk. 
And he knew the story about Frank, and so he was not going to push him, but he was going to be kind and offered his hand to shake. Hi, Frank, I'm the pastor in town. He didn't intend to offend him in any way, but Frank felt offended that the pastor shook his hand and told him who he was. Frank said, I work hard, I take care of my family, and I mind my own business. As far as I am concerned, everything else is just fluff. And others who are saying, leave me alone, preacher. I'm not a prospect. That's why the whole entire church and town were surprised and they were talking about it at the cafe the next morning. They were bamboozled that old Frank, 77 years old, presented himself before the Sunday morning service to be baptized. And this pastor, pastor baptized Frank. So the men were talking. Frank must have been sick that morning. Guess he was scared to meet his maker. Well, I think they say he's got heart trouble. Going up there and being baptized, well, I never old Frank, Frank would ever do anything like that. Enter the church and then be baptized. But this is the way that Frank explained it to the pastor. They were talking the next day after the baptism and Fred said, the pastor. Uh, Frank, you remember that little saying <clears throat> used to give me, I work hard and I take care of my family and I mind my own business? Frank said, yeah, I remember I said that. Fred asked, you still say that? Yeah. Frank asked, well then what's the difference? And Frank responded, I know then what my business was. I didn't know then what my business was. And so Fred baptized Frank. He raised his hand and said, in the presence of those who gather upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ and in obedience to his command, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. So Frank, what changed? Frank now knew what his primary business was. Frank's business was to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Frank's business was to be a part of the worshiping community of those who serve Christ in their daily lives. That's what changed. And that's our business. That's our business, to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And for us Lutherans, it often begins as a baby in baptism. And we go to Sunday school, and we learn about Jesus. We go to confirmation class to pull it all together in our minds, and we discover our baptism calling. And when we are confirmed, we begin doing God's business in our daily life. By our baptism, we know who we are to be disciples of Jesus Christ. It's much more than cleansing. It represents our identification with Christ, our initiation into the body of Christ, going forth in the knowledge that being baptized means to belong to God. And so today as you leave the sanctuary, I'm willing to make a sign of the cross on your forehead, not to re-baptize you, but to wet your baptism with a blessing. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
Let us join together in singing hymn number 90, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. Shall we stand as we are able and confess our faith through the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By the Holy Spirit, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service that all people know they are precious in God's sight. God of grace, you reveal your love and power through water and the Spirit. Guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. 
secure access to clean water for all, and protect the land from drought and flood. God of grace. Establish among the nations the blessings of peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates who risk reputation or retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. God of grace. You protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. Comfort all who are in need, especially April, Gary, Lonnie, Kevin, Ginny, Jackson, Ray, Brenda Link and her family, all of our shut-ins and homebound friends of the congregation. Grace, God of grace, hear our prayer. We are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice seeking. God of grace, hear our prayer. You created each of your saints for your glory. We give thanks for those who have ca called by name into your eternal embrace. Comfort us in grief and release us from fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As you know, we are continuing not to take the offering, and you're doing well. You're dropping offerings off in the back. Thank you. <clears throat> but uh, you've done a marvelous job of sustaining the ministry and the mission of this congregation. And uh, not only do you bless each other, but you bless God. And uh, we thank you for that. This is our prayer. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. I'm giving you exercise today. You're welcome to stand again for our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon each of you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn to our worship, blue worship book and sing 721. Mm -hmm. 